Hmm. Kanye cheats on Kim with Jeffree Star. Well, I mean, it is 2021. One of the top movies of 2020 is Pixar's Soul. Is it? Today, we are officially back and bringing better reviews than ever. Over our extended break called 2020, Pixar released this new animated movie direct to consumers on the Disney Plus streaming platform. Does this spell the end of the traditional movie theater? Well, that's not the question we're answering today because it's time for a movie review. And today we are reviewing Pixar's Soul. While I always have high hopes for Pixar films, I was a little concerned that this would kind of just be a ripoff of Coco, and I was pleasantly surprised to discover that it in fact was not. In fact, Pixar managed to make it a very different movie. Pixar never shies away from addressing difficult themes in their movies, and Soul is no exception. For a movie whose main subject is the meaning of life and the inevitability of death, it somehow manages to avoid giving the viewer an impending sense of dread. I'm going to go over what happens in the movie in great detail, so if you want to avoid spoilers, you can just go to this time code here. At the start of the movie, we are treated to one of the more humorous deaths in a Pixar film, as Joe Gardner, a jazz enthusiast and music teacher, gets the gig of a lifetime and proceeds to fall right into an open manhole. Fearing that he may never accomplish his life's dream, he attempts to return back to the land of the living, but he finds himself in the great before, which is like the land before life. Here he assumes the role as the mentor to the 22nd soul to ever exist. Someone who never completed the final challenge to earn a life on earth, and that is finding her spark. The movie establishes by this point that your spark is basically your passion, and you might want to remember that because it's kind of important. Now, 22 doesn't really care about going to Earth and having a life there, so Joe decides that he's going to help 22 complete her Earth Pass and then use it for himself so that he can go back to his body on Earth and live out his dream. Now, after trying literally everything, they end up trying. They end up going to this uh, enlightened hippie that's piloting a spirit pirate ship, while also spinning a sign on the corner of a street in the physical world. Surprisingly, he does actually have the answer, which is good for Joe, but. Unfortunately, Joe kind of jumped the gun a little bit, and he ended up freaky fridaying himself and this therapy cat that was with him in the hospital. So now, 22 is in Joe's body, and Joe is in the cat's body, and the cat's soul is on its way to the great beyond. So now, 22 has to live out Joe's life until they can meet up with the enlightened hippie again in the real world, and he can help them sort everything out and get everyone's souls back where they belong. Also, also, uh, there's an immortal being from the great before that is hunting Joe down to correct the, the count, the counting of all the souls that he ended up screwing everything up when he um, escaped going to the great beyond. So, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Joe and 22 are actually, they do actually end up getting caught by the uh, immortal being. And they go back to the great before. And then once they're there, they find out that 22 her, her Earth Pass was completed. So at some point during their little field trip on Earth, 22 had completed her Earth Pass. She got, found her spark. She got her Earth Pass. And then Joe 
took her Earth Pass, you know, because that was the the agreed upon deal. She so he got he took her Earth Pass. He went back to Earth to live out his dream. He did that, but he didn't really feel super fulfilled by that. And then he realizes that he may have just completely screwed over twenty two and her whole like life <laughs> that she hasn't lived yet. Uh, and then so he decides that he's going to go back to the great before. So in order to do that, he goes back to his house and he plays piano. Right. So he's playing piano. He's playing some jazz and then he gets in the zone and then he ascends to a higher plane of existence returns to the great before and then he has to track down 22 who is now a lost soul and then he does that and then he saves the day and then the rest is uh, kind of up to interpretation uh if if you want to find out what happens after that you can just watch the movie yourself and i I would recommend that. This doesn't mean that the movie doesn't have its share of issues. Like Titus mentioned, the movie gave a strong message that people are innately born with this passion that is just down to their core. And, you know, it makes it seem like it's a really important thing throughout the whole movie. And we find out later that well, no, not so much. Uh, yeah, that it, the, the important spark isn't your innate passion, which is something like they've hammered in the whole movie, but instead they just, it's just a, th a quality that means you're ready for life. Um, so that was kind of weird, and I, I didn't really appreciate that. It didn't derail the whole movie overall. It was just an inconsistency that kind of poked a hole in the plot of everything we had already seen. And another problem was a very specific trope that they used in the movie. You see, when Joe switched bodies with a cat and 22 was in his body, 22 was the only person who could understand him. And to everybody else, it seemed like he was... Well, it didn't seem like it. He was meowing. Um, and so... Obviously, they did this for a bit of comedic relief, and it was funny. And they really kept up with it throughout the whole film. The only problem is, is during a rather poignant scene where he has a serious conversation with his mother, a confrontation. It isn't used at all, despite the fact that he's still stuck in the body of a cat, and he's telling 22 what to say to his mom. Now, it was a really moving and important scene in the film, so I do understand why they didn't do it, but it was a bit of a distraction when I was expecting to see the cat meow, and it wasn't even moving its lips during the scene. Overall, Soul is a really deep, sweet family movie. It was entertaining and funny. It did have a couple issues that kind of poked holes in the plot and messed with the overall consistency of the film. However, the movie is still a great family choice to watch, and I will probably watch it with my kid again. And that's why here at VNI Nation, we give this movie a 7 out of 10. If you've got a movie you want us to review, let us know. Leave a comment, reach out to us through social media, and if you're really generous, check us out on Patreon where you can guarantee that we will review your movie. All the links can be found in the link tree in the description of this video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And we will see you the next time the credits roll.